folks, welcome to the vlog. Today we are emptying the caustic that we put into the boil kettle yesterday. It's done its job. It's nice and shiny in there again. So this technique of uh, letting the caustic come on first thing before we arrive in the morning with the HLT seems to be working a treat. So I'm gonna to continue to do that. Today, however, is the last brew day that we're gonna have in a series of three batches. So what I intend to do instead is uh, set the cleaning pump to recirculate until around nine o'clock tonight and then it'll cut off and then when we come in tomorrow we can just rinse off the residue and put it to bed for the next week or so until we're ready to start the whole brewing process again. So I've just been out to the car and uh, I've just tested the battery with a multimeter we're sitting at 12.7 volts today um, I started the engine and checked the voltage with the alternator running and it came in at 14.3 volts so I think the alternator is good but the battery is dropping charge slightly so maybe there you know there's a load of crystallization over the lead plates or something like that causing that to happen so I'm gonna look at buying a brand new battery over the next day or two just so I don't get stranded I mean I've spent my fair share uh, in old bangers and having to bump start vehicles in the past and for the sake of a new battery I can't be bothered to go through all that hassle to be honest and while I was out there doing it um, a delivery arrived how quick was that? so we've got a box of stuff here from GC and I believe it's going to include a couple of uh, teas and some butterfly valves so I can get on and fit the uh, the drain valves and it would come to me in a minute I can fit the drain valves to the tank so we don't have to unscrew and unbolt everything every two freaking minutes so while we've got the boil and the brew on today I might see if I can fit up and weld these pieces together and we could probably get them in action for tonight so uh, it'll help us drain off the kit this evening when we're finished finished with the clean. So I've managed to put together what is going to be the new fitting. So liner and nut, liner and nut, liner and nut. But this side here has got a little bit of extra tube to compensate for, we're replacing a sweeping bend and the sweeping bend is a little bit longer than a pulled T. So uh, that is what that little piece is for. And then we've bunged all the ends up with masking tape. And on this section here, we have the tube for back purging on the inside. So once I've got the boil at a happy medium and I don't have to worry about the mash tun for the next 25 minutes, I'm gonna sit down and I'm going to weld up all of these joints and hopefully that will allow us to empty the tank this afternoon a little bit easier than uh, having to undo RJT nuts every single time we want to drain it. It'll just be a valve. the fitting on the tank it caused a massive boil over when I uh, installed it and then opened the valve because obviously a big air bubble shot straight up the boil kettle and as it rose it heated and expanded and 
shot about five pints of beer straight out the top of the chimney. But we cleaned it up quickly and then we had a guy come from Intrepid Brewing Company with a delivery. I had a shoot out there. So it put us back about 10 minutes on the boil. Fortunately, we did not put any Whirlpool or 10 minute additions in actually. So we managed to catch up. It's not gonna make any problem with the beer. It's not gonna cause a problem with the beer. So we've got the new assembly on the base there. If I just zoom in, you'll be able to see that what we can do is now drain straight out the bottom of that tank onto the floor and away. I could extend that pipe if I wanted to to the drain over here so we don't get anything on the floor at all which would probably be a good idea honestly and then this little section of pipe work here focus this little section here actually needs to have an inch and a half elbow put on there to run across here and that little bit there is not high enough so there's a few little tweaks that we're going to have to do to this new fitting but it's no doubt going to just save my back every time we go down there to drain the tank it's just a lever now Right, so we're transferring the Jaded Pioneer across into Fermenter 1 and we've received another package. This one is from Mark Cooper of Northern Iron. That's right, Northern Ireland. And he sent me the Citra Simcoe Pale Ale, both bottled out of the keg. So I'll be taking these home tonight and trying them straight away, buddy. Friggin' right, so I will. So I'll pop them there. But in the meantime, Stuart bought uh, all of these tiny rebel beers a month ago or so for us to try at the birthday beer pack. And basically, he's just left all these fresh double dry up IPAs to uh, sit for a month. Bad move. So I'm taking the initiative and. Uh, I'm going to open a couple of the cans, drink half of the beer, and take the other half up to stew. I'll just rinse this glass. Okay, so the first thing I want to dive into is the most simple one. This is the Double Dry Hot Pilsner um, by Four Pure and Tiny Rebel, coming out at 5% ABV. Foamy. I think that's a fair share. In fact, yeah, there's loads left in that. I'll have a bit more. Cheers. That's more like it. Right. Aroma. A bit uh, 
bit grassy off the bat. Mm. It's quite fruity, it's nice. Probably not something I'd go back to. It's got that dry pills and a bite to the back end. Very reminiscent of a Yeva or Java, depending on where you come from. That's not very bad. I better go and take him his off I can, hadn't I? Right, the first run of the new valve behind you. So let's see how this actually goes. I still estimate there's going to be a lot of crap on the floor, obviously, because we're draining it onto the floor. But is it going to be easier? Just chucking Mark's beers into the car and then we're going to shoot across the tool station to pick some bits up and uh, whilst, oh, it's locked. whilst we're there, Craig is coming with me and we're going to enjoy a swift pint in the freaking Mallard. So I'm just going to lock this place up, give Stuart the keys for the van and drop Jack off. Oh well I ended up outside frigging tool station today. Unfortunately, I've been looking for this for ages. They've got the O'Keefe's in, the big tub. So, no more cracked fingers for me. So we're just about to jump back in the car, shoot round, and we're gonna have a pint at Wayne's place, the Mallard, on Worksop train station. Bingo friggin' bango, folks. So we're back in Retford now, and uh, yeah, I had a quick pint in the Mallard. It was a little bit quiet in there though, so I didn't take the camera out. Uh, but yes, back from tool station with a few things that we've got that uh, I might put into use tomorrow or next week. It's basically some cable that we're going to string these hops up with. Uh, so I'm going to put like a, a turnbuckle, some uh, vine eyes, some really big bolts actually, not just normal vine eyes. Uh, we're going to stick them into the wall and we're going to drop jute strings down to support the vines. And at the end of the season, the idea is that we can cut the strings, cut the vine, take it away without having to unwind any actual steel wires. <laughs> so the steel is gonna go across the top and we're gonna drop 
the string off of them. So while I'm in the house home alone, back, Gemma's taken Jack home and uh, her brother as well, the other older brother Jordan's gone home. Uh, he's been over today to see him. So uh, there's nobody on tablets, there's nobody on Playstations, Xboxes or watching TV. So I'm going to change out a couple of the kitchen sockets for these lap uh, USB sockets. 3.1 amp it says on the uh, actual device but we will of course test it with the USB doctor so I'm just going to change this socket out here and we'll just quickly test what we actually are going to get from this the one we've got in at the minute says 2.1 and we only seem to get 1.2 amps out of it so we'll see if these are any good these are screw fix, not tool station. I've picked them up last week. I've had them a while. So I'll quickly switch these over and we'll check out what rating we actually get from them. Oakley doakley friendly folkly. So here is the charger doctor. Let's pop him in. Can't see him can we with this here. Let's just move in a little bit. See if I can't refocus. Oh my god. Can't see it. Right hold on a second. So we're coming in from a totally different angle, folks. Oh, we need to adjust the height and everything. There we go. So we've got 5.16 volts coming out. And I've got a really good cable here. This red cable is one of the best cables I've bought for USB charging. So let's have a look what we get when I put a load on. There we go, that's my Samsung phone plugged in. The voltage is dropping as we'd expect. 1.2, 1.29, 1.7. It's already better. We've got 1.71 1 amps, 1.73. Right, we look like we've peaked at 1.7, but still, that's a good pull compared to what we had before and it's climbing still was that 1.8 see the phone will pull more amps until it sees the voltage drop and then when the voltage drops it will sort of level out at that kind of charging so in comparison to these uh, cheap Chinese ones that I originally bought from Screwfix, so they might have actually come from Home Bargains, but yeah, they're tat, these LAP ones, I know it says 3.1, but you're getting 2 amps out of it, maybe 3.1 amps is the maximum you're going to get with two devices stuck on there, who knows, all I know is that is an improvement. Yeah, definitely an improvement. 1.6 amps, it's pulling steady. I'm also, oh, <laughs> I'm almost ready to call it a day, folks. But there's one more thing that I would like to do, and that is crack open a Citra and Simcoe pail sent to me by Mark from Northern Iron. And I'm hoping that this is going to be as good as the last beer that he sent me because they were absolutely exquisite bud oh that lid was on there tight just the way i like it dude there's nothing better than coming home from work and tucking in to a professionally made home brew i know i'm bigging this one up but the last beers that you sent me mate 
were fucking amazing. And I've no doubt, oh, I can smell it already. You ain't fucking about, bud. Oh, the aroma on that, it totally kicks ass of any beers I've got on the bar at the minute. I must admit, it's better than anything I've got on at the bar at the minute. That smells wonderful, sir. Oh. Shit the bed. Mate. Out fucking standing. Once again, you've knocked it out of the park. I'm going to sit down, edit the vlog, and enjoy this absolutely amazing beer. And hopefully... We'll be able to piece together another vlog for you tomorrow, which is Friday for me. And we'll see you then. Cheers. Cheers, Mark. Fucking diamond, mate, Sartes. Fucking diamond, eh?